Hey guys, Dr. Burke here. In this video, I'm going to share with you how you can eat bacon and lose your fat. And I'm not kidding. I'm actually totally serious. So just hear me out, okay? I have this reference book. It's called Guyton's Physiology. I want to share something with you. But before I do, I want to ask you a quick question. Do you know the hormone that acts as the primary switch that determines whether your body burns fat or sugar fuel? Do you know what hormone that is? Let me share with you. It's on page 930, okay? It says the role of insulin in switching between carbohydrate and lipid metabolism. That means the role of insulin in switching between sugar and fat, all right? When the glucose concentration is low, when there's no sugar in the body, insulin secretion is suppressed. And fat is utilized almost exclusively for energy, okay? So basically, insulin is the main hormone that controls whether you are going to burn fat exclusively or you're just going to burn sugar, okay? So let me show you something. Okay, so you probably already know that eating sugar triggers insulin, right? And that's part of the glycemic index, which basically is an index of all the foods and how fast they turn into sugar and raise your blood sugar, right? So that's kind of a known thing, and you probably know that sugar is bad, so you avoid it. And some of you are losing weight, but some of you aren't, because the glycemic control over insulin is only 50% of what raises insulin. There are other reasons why insulin could be high. And there's even a scale called the insulin index that I want to talk about. So this is going to shock you. If we take a look at the insulin index, there are foods that do not trigger the glycemic index, but do increase insulin. The ones low on the list are the fats, the butter, the coconut oil, the bacon. Bacon is only 9%. That is why bacon is actually good to lose weight, because it doesn't affect insulin. As we go up the list, the foods that affect it more and more, uh, egg yolks is low because it's mostly fat, but egg whites are 55%. Amazing. It's a concentrated protein. Look at whey protein is 71%. What does that mean? It means that the more lean you go with your proteins, the more low fat, the more it stimulates insulin. This is exactly what people have been focusing on to lose weight, but it's having a rebound effect. It's much better if you have whole fat products, like don't buy lean meat, buy the fattier meats, okay? The bacon, and it's totally okay, okay? So that's one thing I want to talk about. Now, there's other things too. All right, so we know certain proteins stimulate insulin to a certain degree, some more than others. We know fat does not stimulate insulin, especially if it's pure fat, and bacon would be more fat than protein. But there's something else, gut hormones. What does that mean, gut hormones? It means every time you eat anything, you're gonna get some spike in insulin, okay? Now, what does that have to do with anything? It means this. If you're having breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you're eating snacks in between, even if they're healthy, you are creating an insulin response. Now remember, we're trying to take insulin and bring it way, 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 way down, right? So the best thing to do, and this is why intermittent fasting is very, very, very good to lower insulin. Not necessarily to lower your calories to create starvation, but to lower the frequency of meals that you consume. It's just as important of what you eat, so the frequency. So let's say in the morning you have breakfast and you're, you're basically, you want to go from breakfast to lunch without any snacks. We want to go from lunch to dinner without any snacks. We don't want to eat anything after dinner. That would be a very important thing to improve insulin in general, okay? Now, if in the morning you're not hungry, don't eat. So you want to basically go as long as you can and then eat when you're hungry because that way we keep insulin down. Again, these are very powerful tips to be able to get into fat burning. Most people graze so much and they're thinking more meals, it's going to stimulate metabolism. It really doesn't. You're going to keep a constant stimulation of insulin and eventually you're going to get a condition called insulin resistance where your body now does not do good with insulin. And even when you don't eat, the insulin is higher. 
The way that you would know you have insulin resistance is if you can't go between one meal and another without getting seriously hungry because an insulin resistance, if you take a look at this, here's insulin resistance and this is a normal cell. An insulin resistance, you only have a little bit of fuel that goes into the cell because it, it's resisting insulin and glucose. In a normal cell, you have glucose that goes in there pretty nicely. So basically, the cells and in insulin resistance are kind of starving of nutrition. That's why when you eat, um, you might eat your food, but you're still not satisfied. You need a little something sweet or some quick energy because the cells are starving of nutrition. So that means your insulin has to go higher and higher to actually work better. So that's the condition where you have symptoms of hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia. You can have like high sugar and low sugar symptoms at the same time. So you crave sweets, uh, you get tired after a meal, you're not satisfied, you can't go for very long without getting hungry. So that's just all, it's a good indicator to see if you have insulin resistance or not. If you have belly fat, you have insulin resistance, okay? If you have belly fat, you have a fatty liver most, most of the time. And a fatty liver can then create insulin resistance because a lot of that problem occurs in the liver. So the point is, to get out of the situation, we want to av avoid what originally caused the problem, which is a high sustained level of insulin over a long period of time. So we want to be careful not to stimulate this insulin too much. So what does fat have to do with this? What does bacon have to do with, it, do with this? Bacon allows you to, number one, go longer without eating to satisfy you. It also does not trigger insulin. So it's the perfect food or any fats for that matter, to get you to go from one meal to the next comfortably. So you're not dropping your blood sugars, okay? So it's just more satisfying. Now, some people get up in the morning, they're not hungry until lunch. Well, then just eat one meal at lunch. And then they'll have one dinner, and that's fine. So two meals are totally fine, you can do that, okay? This is just one technique that can help fix this and help you lose weight, but you're gonna to need to add, adjust your fats because if you can't go from breakfast to lunch without being ravenously extremely hungry, then that means you have to add a little bit more fat to your breakfast. Same thing with uh, dinner. If you're, if you're extremely hungry at dinner, you have to add a little bit more fat at that lunch, okay? If you're extremely hungry at night, add a little more fat and you can keep adjusting it until you're satisfied. That's how you can have more fat, especially bacon. Now, if you're concerned about having high cholesterol by eating bacon, here's the truth. All of the, the parts of the, the systems in the body work on a feedback mechanism, which means that if you eat more of one thing, your body will reduce this thing over here. And I'm talking about the liver. The liver makes 2,000 milligrams of cholesterol every single day. Okay, that's like a dozen eggs. So if you eat more cholesterol, your body will just adjust from the feedback loops and actually make less. It's real simple. Where cholesterol comes into play, it's the carbohydrate that you're eating that converts. Insulin converts sugar into bad cholesterol and triglycerides. It's not the fat that you're eating that does that. That's been thoroughly proven. I'll put some links below, okay? And you can study that. But I'm not gonna get into that in this this section. But here's the other thing that will trigger insulin, cortisol. What is cortisol? Cortisol is that stress hormone. Now, in some of the other uh, videos I've done, I've talked about the relationship between cortisol and belly fat. But the relationship is this. Cortisol releases glucose and sugar. It turns your protein into sugar, okay? Even when you don't eat sugar. So if there's a stress state or you're going through menopause, or even you're a diabetic. You're, the cortisol is gonna go up, it's gonna release more sugar, and then that sugar is gonna stimulate insulin. So really the insulin is doing the damage, but the cortisol is helping it do the damage, okay? And so what we wanna do is lower stress. One of the biggest things that I talk about is to improve and fix your sleep. I have separate videos on that you can watch. But sleep is very, very beneficial, and you can also do more exercise. Exercise will improve insulin. It lowers insulin as well because it's gonna get rid of the excess sugar that's stuck there, okay? So cortisol is something to look at. These other intermittent fasting, 
Uh, don't snack anymore. That's going to help. Add a little bit of fat between meals. Now, I'll, um, I pretty much have about five things of bacon every morning, and uh, my cholesterol is really good, and that just satisfies me. If you're a smaller person, have less, but I'm just telling you, if you have a high-quality bacon, there's nothing wrong with that at all, okay? And then be careful of your proteins, especially whey proteins, okay? I hope you learned something. I will see you in the next video.